Since we are uh, learning Hilchot Lashon Ara, right before Mincha, uh, today we're not going to learn a halacha. Today I'm going to take you on a field trip. And uh, we're not going to actually go outside. But the way to learn anything is to also apply it, see it live, uh, demonstrations, illustrations, examples. So I want to share with you something that I saw today that was very uh, sad. And Bezrat uh, Hashem, we'll learn from it a little bit about Lashon Ara. <clears throat> Yesterday somebody saw me on the way out and started talking to me. So I, we used to live in the same uh, community many years back. And he was asking me all sorts of questions. When did you come? Whatever. Small talk. Then he tells me, can I take a selfie with you? Well, okay, take a selfie with me. So he takes a selfie with me. And our ways part. He goes and puts this selfie on Facebook. The selfie, of course, caused a lot of attraction. The beginning was a positive attraction. Oh, how lucky you are. Oh, I wish I would be in Sfat. Oh, send the rabbi my regards. And then, of course, it attracted all the beauty and the gems that can come out of people's mouths, in this case of their fingertips, to a point that my name was trashed, slandered, swung from side to side. There was a whole party on that thread on Facebook. Now, I don't go on Facebook. I have better things to do in my life. But I have a few admins that run the social media. Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, all these places... They, they run it. So, of course, right away, the attention of one of the admins got caught from this thread that pulled uh, uh, the uh, uh, admin's attention. And, uh, and the sad part was, and I'll tell you soon why I'm saying sad, is the ones who were doing all the Lashon Ara are people who call themselves rabbis. Now, I don't get impressed by the word rabbi because if you don't practice what you preach or you behave like an animal, you're not a rabbi, and I don't care if you have seven ordinations from the top rabbis in the world. If you don't behave in a way to give an example, a rabbi means a teacher. If you don't behave in the appropriate way, I'm sorry to tell you, you can take your ordination and throw it to the garbage. And I don't want to say it in other words that are not appropriate and nice. But, so there were three, they were going backwards and forth. So this admin came on the thread, tagged their names and told them you should be ashamed of yourself. How dare you slander in public Rabbi Anava? And especially that everything that you write there is not even true. One of them came into the attack, started a whole argument, and I don't know where it finished, but I got all the screenshots to, and was asked, what should we do with this uh, fiasco? So I read some of the screenshots just to see uh, who are the participating uh, individuals, what was said and so forth. But now why am I telling you this? Not because I'm trying to get more attention. It's to see what's the Lashon Ara here, who is guilty, and who is not, which in this case nobody is not, and what needs to be done in a situation like this. This is literally practically what needs to be done. The first one who's guilty here is the one who posted the picture without my permission or my consent. Who told you to put my picture publicly on, a, on, a, on somebody's uh, wall or whatever it's called, a profile? First of all, get my permission. So by the fact that you did that and it draws so much attention, you are the first one who was guilty. And as we went through the classes in the last week, how many love him did this person transgress? We're not going to count right now because we're not going to get into the nitty gritty how many precepts the person failed. He's guilty number one. Then you have another three guys that are fully guilty are the ones who started writing all the jokes and the nonsense. 100% guilty and also transgressed probably about 9 to 11 loving. Now this is pretty obvious. And uh, you know the person that mean told me should I delete? Should I do something? You can't delete because it's not on my, my uh, end. And only the person who did it can delete. But, uh, and I said no, no, just leave it alone. Leave it alone because I'm very happy when people talk to Shonara about me. I told you already. Because we do know that if a person talks about me, Lashon Ara, he gives me all his mitzvot. All his mitzvot come to me, and all my sins go to him. So I, I don't want people to say Lashon Ara, but at one time I said, please, please talk Lashon Ara about me. 
So if I would be able to check my spiritual account, I probably got a lot of mitzvot from this little uh, thread. But the point is, as A, who's the guilty one? The one who posted it. Be very careful what you post on social media. Because if you're going to uh, track a whole argument of Lashon Hara, you are the number one guilty person. Now, if you remember, we learned that a few days ago. How many people saw it? Let's say a thousand people saw it. Then can you imagine the amount of Lashon Hara that person is now putting towards him by posting one picture? Because everybody read that. Now, so this is guilty number one. Be very careful what you post on social media. Especially when it's on a public figure that will draw much more attention. Because my name was tagged in there a few times. So by default, the algorithm of Facebook will draw many people into this post. Then you have the other three individuals that hard for me to call them rabbis. Individuals. For me, they're mamash akorach going publicly and writing nonsense and lies and flapping and backwards and forth. I mean, the thread is very long. They are just as guilty as the person who uh, placed it. And then there's another group of people who are just as guilty. And you know who they are? All the ones who read it. And neither one of them, there was not one person in this thread uh, protesting or condemning or saying... Uh, I don't want to be your friend anymore. You are speaking Lashon Hara. So all the eyes that saw it, and it says underneath the picture how many people shared, how many people liked, how many people uh, reached. Can you imagine the chunt pot cooked around one picture? And I didn't go and check it, and I'm not going to go to go check on it. But I can tell you already, and especially for the viewers online, if you are one of them, as long as you didn't protest, you are 100% guilty like the ones who posted it. All it takes is to write some type of a protest. I don't agree. I disagree. Shame on you. Whatever it is. Take me out of this post. So the great warning that I need to give you is be very careful from all these places. I would even recommend to you, don't go to social media. This is a, uh, you know, the Talmud says, the Talmud, the Zohar, that there are three uh, entrances to Gehenom. The first one is in the desert, where Korach fell into the ground. The second one is in the ocean, which is uh, called the Bermuda Triangle, which the Talmud doesn't say Bermuda Triangle, but the Talmud says 4,000 miles directly from is Israel. Measure it, you'll see that it fits perfectly. But that's the second entrance to Gainom, the to hell. The Zohar is elaborating on that many, many places, that the wives of the Samech Mem, not going to mention their names, they dwell there, they have an army of uh, women that look like fish, what they call them uh, mermaids. And their whole mermaid thing is real. This is not some hoax. We, spoke, we learned about it in the Zohar that uh, women, they're half fish, half women, and they're in the water. They're not as pleasant as they, as they show them in Disney. I'm not going to talk about Disney right now. But they're not as, uh, 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 how do you say, innocent and cute like Disney. They're evil. And they, 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 they eat whatever, whatever sailor, whatever uh, uh, person, the ship, they pull the ships. Now, this is the second entrance to Gainom, and the third entrance to Gainom is Yerushalayim. So I'm going to add on that, there's a fourth entrance to Gainom, and it's called Facebook. So if you want a good seat in first line in Gainom, go on Facebook. You don't, get off. It's a pit of Gainom. So why is it really saddening me? Because I would expect my enemies to go against me. I would expect evil people to go against me. When we're trying to stir up some Kedushah in the world and gathering thousands of people around the world to go on a 40-day journey that you refine yourself, you elevate yourself, you work on yourself. And rule number one is that you do not say Lashon Hara. And then from our own nation, people who are wearing yarmulkes, beards, tzitzit, I don't know if they pray three times a day, but even if they do, their prayer is worthless. And these are the people who are spreading the hate, slander, lashonara, clownery, mockery. That's what saddens me. My wife told me, don't take it personal. I said, I take something personal? You think something affects me? Bo Hashem, I'm Israeli. I have thick skin like this. Nothing affects me. You can say whatever you want about me. I don't care. I don't take nothing personally. But I told you, you know what bothers me? Is that we're doing such effort. Thousands of people are taking this 40-day journey so serious 
And then you have on the other side, and from where? People who look orthodox, Hasidic, however you want to call them, and these are the ones who are making the salad. That's what saddens me. So just to conclude, since it's a shiur of a class of halakha, not a class of musar, the first person who posted the picture, he's 100% guilty and all the Lashon Ara is on his plate. The next ones who are 100% guilty are the ones who started the whole conversation. And I went through the thread, not through so thoroughly, but there was nobody else who jumped into the Lashon Ara, by the way. It was just three people. And they're all supposedly rabbis. And uh, which this is where you see a perfect example of a Korach, only jealousy, nothing else there. There's no, I don't even know who they are, never even met them in my life. You see pure hate and jealousy, Sinat Chinam, jealousy, Kina, Lashon Ara, and, and nobody else jumped in. So these, these guys are just as guilty, and the ones who are just as guilty too are the ones who saw it and didn't protest. If you saw it and went off the thread, then you'll get a halachic discount. But if you didn't say anything, you, you're in the party. If you remember, we learned this halakha last week, that if you're in the room and you're here and you don't say anything, you might not be in the group of the Lashon Ara, but the, you're, you're, you're part of the group. You didn't say anything, but you're in the group. Exactly what happened to the friends of Korach. They were just around, and the ground took them in. So the, hal the, 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 the halakha we want to learn from here Ignore right now the, the feelings, the, the 40 days, the, the musar behind it, the message. The message you figure out by yourself. My message, just don't go on Facebook. The halacha instruction here is you have to be very careful who pulls you into a Lashon Ara and on what. So I'm sorry I took this to class instead of learning from the book, but I think this field trip is not less important to understand because everybody is somehow involved either in a... Facebook or a group chat on WhatsApp or all the rest of these groups. And I will say that the pit of Genom is not only Facebook, it is all these groups. Because you pulled like this into Lashon Ara. And here the damage is in thousands. It's not one or two people. Oh, it's privately. It's in front of thousands. Now, go and ask yourself why we're still in exile. And now also ask yourself, is the redemption going to come nice? Or is it going to come in such a storm that the Kadosh Baruch Hu, I think, not had it up to here. That he already had it. There's no even up how much he had it. That this is what's done publicly in front of millions of eyes. So the, again, just to, to, to screw, screw it in. I don't know if that's how you say it in English. In Hebrew you say, let me screw the, the, the screw all the way in. You have to understand who is the ones who are guilty here, what they're guilty in. I didn't even count the lavim. It's irrelevant. Three lavim, five lavim, nine lavim. It's really irrelevant. It's the fact that it was up there. And the sad part of all, is there was no one person, including the person who posted the picture, that condemned it. The person who posted the picture was trying to defend himself and not the argument. So that's unfortunately how the system works. Please take from this example to learn what to do, what not to do. This is a perfect example of Lashon Ara. When we're learning the halachot, it's very hard sometimes to give examples. Here you have a perfect example how something so small from one click of a button, what it does, I don't even imagine what it does in the world above. So we can take thousands of people to fast all day long, to learn Torah all day long. And what are we, we doing for 40 days now? Time, thousands of people can all be ruined in one, one post on Facebook for one little thing. So please, be very responsible when you, behave, when you go on these public places, how you talk, what you share, what you do. I mean, this is not uh, something to ignore. We are focusing in these 40 days specifically on the severity of Lashon Ara, slander, lying, all these things. That's how we started, by the way. The whole initiative came from Lashon Ara of the spies and Korach and the rest of the clowns. And this is, you know, uh, uh, that's what saddened me. That with, with all our effort, that's what I get from the other, other side. So please do yourself a favor. Don't be involved in things like this. If you don't want to think of others, think of yourself. Question everything before you do. Just that you know that some very large amount of innocent people, they don't even know what's going on here. 
And just to add one more point here, that if somebody posted a comment on this thread and the rest of the Lashonara came after that person comment and he didn't see, then he's not involved. It's the ones who read it. But the thing is that usually people like reading the backwards and forth. So the first ones, before the Lashonara started, they posted a comment or a thumbs up or whatever and they didn't come back to the thread, they have nothing to do it. They might have the danger that the umbrella of the Lashonara will be spread above them. But nevertheless, they didn't participate in anything. But the sad reality that many people jump into the thread and they read what's going on there and Hashem Erachem and should have mercy on them. Mm -hmm.